good morning everyone i welcome you all to this final day the last day of the online classes of ma part 1 english second semester for the syllabus prescribed by rashtra sant tukaroji maharaj nagpur university nagpur since the academic session 2020-21 being organized in collaboration by the four institutes namely rajkumar keval ramani mahila mahavidyalay mahila mahavidyalay nandanvan jm patel arts commerce and science college bhandara and vasantrao naik government institute of arts and social sciences nagpur as we enter the last day the morning session the penultimate session we have another evening session as well so uh, we will be dealing with third unit of paper 4 that is the english novel and uh, the presentation will be made on a, por uh, a portrait of uh, the portrait of a lady uh, by william james uh, uh, by henry james henry james james uh, the resource person for the resource person for the session is uh, dr uh, renuka roy uh, ma'am is uh, working on the post of associate professor at sk porwal college of arts commerce and science kamti she has a teaching experience of 15 years and she has completed her doctoral research on critical study of women characters of nepal uh, and uh, though she hasn't mentioned it but i remember that she was uh, uh, awarded uh, uh, that uh, fellowship development uh, fellowship 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 for that because she had worked under my former uh, head of the department dr uh, harode madam so that is what is there and uh, Uh, she has uh, received a, a fund from the ugc for that she has published papers presented papers in the various conferences seminars uh, many papers are published as chapters in books and her area of interest is feminist study diaspora literature and indo caribbean writers she is a soft skill trainer and she has worked in the important committees of uh, uh, the examination of nagpur university particularly in the moderation board for question papers so on behalf of the participating students and the organizers i invite uh, dr renuka roy to uh, go ahead with a presentation on uh, the prescribed novel over to you madam thank you sir thank you am i audible sir yeah yeah you are yes uh, at the outset i take this opportunity to thank the organizing body of this online classes of ma english semester 2 rajkumar keval ramani uh, mahavidya mahila mahavidyalaya nagpur and dr urmila dabir madam vasantrao naik government institute of arts social science uh, arts and social sciences nagpur and the director of the institution dr sujata vyas madam mahila mahavidyalaya nagpur and dr vandana bhagdikar madam jm patel college bhandara and dr dhomne sir for extending this opportunity to me to deliver this session and it is an opportunity for the students as well who will be getting good lecture lectures and study materials due to this endeavor i congratulate the entire team for their incessant work because i personally believe that it is very easy to start any mission but it is equally different it is very difficult to to give a sustaining quality output in that field and this is what board of studies of english has done uh, in nagpur university i congratulate the entire team and as one of the uh, members of this team i am really very fortunate to get this opportunity at a very early stage of my life thank you so much dr kapil thank you so much dr kartik panikar sir for this opportunity and now without taking much of the time of our students let us now proceed with the topic and my topic of presentation is portrait of a lady by henry james before we move on let us now have a glimpse of henry james as a, as a author henry james was a prolific writer and he wrote novels short stories travel sketches and literary criticism etc 
So he was born in New York. He is an American born novelist and who has settled down in England and he died in London. He got British citizenship very late in his life. In 1950, around 1915, he became British citizen and the entire life of Henry James was spent in England and he has gathered influences of many uh, stalwarts in English and Italian literature, Russian literature, and he has given wonderful output in the form of English literature. He holds a distinctive position in the history of modern English novels. He was born in New York and then was educated simultaneously in America and Europe. He became friend of New England group of writers like James Russell Lowell, H. W. Longfellow, William Dean Howell, etc. He adapted London at his as his new home, and in 1950, he became nationalized British subject. It is said that he is the first theorist of the novelist art, and that we will see in our presentation as we will progress. We will see what kind of idea theory that. James has propounded and how he has materializes, materialized them in his work. He formulated a theory of novel and established novel as an art form. He gave the novel an aesthetic intensity. In his critical essay titled Art of Fiction, Henry James laid stress on the artistic value of the novel. To him, novel was primarily a, an art form to be judged solely by artistic canons, concerned not with the moral purpose, but with the objective and impartial presentation of reality of life. So he was more concerned about the artistic presentation in the novel. And this part also we will discuss during our rights, how, what kind of artistic um, uh, nuances that he has introduced in his novels that we will see in detail. For James, novel is a personal and direct impression of life. The success of novelist depends on his ability to give the impression of particular life dealt with him in his work. So whatever the writer has the impression about the life that only he gives reflection to in his work this is what he believed. Henry James was a great figure in transatlantic culture. What is transatlantic culture? As we had already talked about this, he was born in America and he flourished as a writer, British uh, writer in Britain, in England. So this is transatlantic, across Atlantic Ocean. So he was a transatlantic writer of transatlantic culture and he became the instrument to bridge the two ideologies that also we will see in the consequent uh, subsequent slides at this point of discussion we need to talk about james literary career in 1879 and 81 now this period the, during this period he dealt with the issue pertaining the contrast between american and european civilization there is a stark difference in the ideology of American civilization and European civilization. The period of mid 19th have witnessed American isolationism that America has completely uh, became what we can say there was a stalemate in terms of literary output, in terms of any kind of intellectual activities, academic activities in America which led American literary culture virtually exhausted. So during that period, mid 19th, it was a barren period for America so far as literary output was concerned. Now the enthusiast and learned writers, they started coming to Britain. They started coming to England and they started to flourish as writers because they were attracted by English philosophy, culture and life. During this period literary of literary stalemate, 
the average american mind became naive and provincial what is naive naive means uh, very innocent they were not having any idea they were uh, culturally not very groomed and uh, uh, provincial is also shallowness so at this point of time america's relation with europe was also not good but the intellectuals of american they realize the value to associate themselves with european life and culture yet the intellectual american writers like hawthorne henry james senior henry james junior henry adams strove to overcome the american xenophobia of this period and adapted and acclaimed european history philosophy and culture so what is xenophobia xenophobia is fear of something they were fear of they had the fear of european culture european european impact european uh, what we can say they thought that european civilization and their culture will have an overbearing impact on their free willed nature so there was xenophobic attitude among the american hmm. in the novel portrait of a lady the concept of this cultural conflict is obliquely brought forth by james so james he dexterously deals with this idea of con cultural conflict and he presents beautifully presents the difference between these two ideologies british uh, british ethos and american libertine attitude so these two ideologies he has very beautifully brought forth through his literary work the portrait of an of a lady james believe that each cultural complex creates its own personality and character as each society inculcates certain values into the minds of its members since value of one society differs from value of another this give rise to a clash of cultures and ideologies so the characters that we will see in the novel i i will uh, explain it very uh, smoothly how uh, which character represents american culture american egalitarianism and which character is representative of british conservative attitude that i will describe and this novel has beautifully symbolically carried out this clash and he has brought a wonderful blend of these two cultures okay james has a vast literary output to his credit and his fictional works have three phases of evolution he has evolved in three phases the first phase includes the novels like roderick hudson the american the european the portrait of a lady in this works james was mainly concerned with the study of american life wise wise european life and olden european culture the novels in second phase dealt with english life and english characters these novels the tragic muse the spoils of the poynton the awkward age they fall under his second phase of literary output the third phase includes his american studies and novels of maturity like the wings of the dove ambassador the golden bough the bostonians and the wings uh, and the princess kasama sima these are the works that he has given in his third phase of literary career henry james excuse me sorry for its beautiful theme as well as content during 1875 78 
James visited Paris and he came in contact with Russian novelist Ivan Turgenev, whose work appealed to him. And through Turgenev was brought into Gustave Flaubert's coteries. Coteries are a group of learned intellectuals having the similar kind of aptitude, similar kind of Uh, Renuka, please unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Now, uh, with the, uh, under the influence of Ivan Targnev, he became aware of, uh, he was, he confirmed his own theory of uh, uh, literary creation, writing novels, and he started worrying less about the story. And he thought that experience of the protagonist, it is through delineation of experience of the protagonist, the novels the origin. And this is one of the, uh, what we can say, core uh, area where uh, he worked that will be discussing stream of consciousness theory stream of consciousness technique where the evolution and the working of the mind of main character is uh, has uh, uh, has lots of prominence lots of importance so these writers they have evolved this technique of stream of consciousness and in their works they have exploited this technique in england he has he was prominently taken up by the leading victorian uh, writers and become a regular visitor um, uh, in their group he consorted with alfred tennyson william gladstone robert browning and others he visited many of the great victorian houses and country seats and he was elected uh, to london clubs he published stories simultaneously in English and American period, uh, periodicals and mingled with the writers like George Meredith, Robert Louis Stevenson, Edmund Goose, and other writers and thus established himself as a significant figure in Anglo-American literary or artistic relations. So this is the introduction of Henry James. And uh, you may find uh, some other information about this writer in the books of history of English literature, but uh, I will not take uh, much time on this, um, on this area and we will move further uh, and discuss the novel uh, under study, that is the portrait of a lady. So kindly uh, bring this next slide, yes. Portrait of a Lady, as we had already discussed. So this novel was written by Henry James in 1881. It was during his first phase of literary creation, literary uh, activity that Portrait of a Lady was written. And after writing this book, after 25 years of writing this book, he has given a wonderful prefix uh, in his edition, New York edition of the same novel, and in which he describes, he himself describes the character of Isabel Archer as a certain woman confronting her destiny. What is confronting? She is herself challenging, 
destroying disturbing her own destiny how because of of shortcomings in her own personality her destiny was jeopardized because of her own errors in judgment how she brought uh, some uh, difficulties in her own life how her life was not uh, smooth as a lady of her look of her spirit should have uh, should have got uh, in na in natural course of uh, in natural course of things okay so now the portrait of a lady is a story of isabel archer and this novel was written at the end of first phase of his literary career a story of a young woman from albany in america so isabel she was a resident of america a place called albany who is brought to europe by her aunt mrs tochet her aunt is very rich and she brings isabel to europe isabel brings with herself her narrow provincialism and pretension she has very shallow nature at the beginning of the novel she has very shallow nature and she is highly pretentious so she is flamboyant she is active she is energetic but without any practical wisdom about the life okay so also a sense of her own sobriety and her free spirit so she has got the notion about her free spirit her independence her freedom etc so all these notions she carries from american island okay uh, at the beginning she refuses to be treated in the victorian world as a mere marriageable object so when she comes to europe obviously she receives because of her good looks because of her uh, very lively nature she receives many proposals from good suitors but she rejects them so she has some ideas some notions from paul some fa uh, fancy notions of her own freedom and independence and she wishes to safeguard all those notions at any cost at the beginning okay she is a prototype of an american moving in the expatriate society of england what is expatriate so the society where she comes they were all people belonging to american continent her uncle mr tochet then daniel tochet ralph her cousin ralph tochet even auntie miss uh, mrs uh, tochet they were all the american uh, migrated to england so she comes to an expatriate american society in england okay uh, through the plot Uh, through the plot of this novel james offer a shrewd appraisal of american character so he makes a balance there is a criticism about her short sightedness about her provincialism but at the same time james gives a sly appraisal uh, say uh, james appraises uh, praises her for some of her innate goodness some of her originality Isabel comes to England in order to broaden her own cultural gamut. She attracts the attention of numerous suitors. Yet, owing to her own fanciful notion of preserving her freedom, she declines the proposal of an English gentry, Lord Warburton. So, first suitor that she meets is Lord Warburton. He is very prosperous. He has got money. he has got fortune he is from a an aristocratic uh, um, family and he would have been the best uh, husband for isabel but she has some notion and justification for that could not be found and she outrightly declines uh, lord warburton who remains her admirer and well wisher throughout the novel another suitor is mr casper greenwood he is american businessman her decision and finally she decides to marry a reclusive aesthet what is reclusive aesthet aesthet is a collector here gilbert osmond is a collector of all the artifacts uh, all the uh, uh, what we can say uh, articles of decoration hmm? some uh, babylots some paintings some uh, what we can say some uh, 
antiques. So he used to collect all this art material. He was a collector of all these things. He has got very disdainful attitude. He used to think of himself. He was very egoist, this Gilbert Osmond. And uh, he was reclusive by nature. He doesn't entertain people in his, uh, in his personal sphere. So Isabel marries this Gilbert Osmond. Eventually, she leads a very unhappy and loveless life. And this makes her... And finally, after uh, two, three years of this experience, she assesses the relative merits of her own tendencies and deeper conviction. She analyzes. So here comes the play of stream of consciousness in the novel. In, uh, during around 42, 41, uh, first chapter of uh, this novel, Isabel is now analyzing. She analyzes her own predicament, her own decisions, her own convictions and beliefs and how she has erred in marrying a man of a pretentious nature who is not a genuine human being. Isabel is an embodiment of American myth of freedom prevailing among the fair sex, which seems to be an outcome of their historical blindness and pride. So here it is a comment by the critic that Isabel is a person who is the outcome of Americans' historic blindness. They, uh, he claims that they do not have um, uh, the history or they do not have the civilization or the culture so ancient as to extend wisdom to their fair sex. So she is that way very short-sighted at the beginning of the novel. Okay, She develops later on that we will see. In this context, it is important to study some of the aspects discussed by the James in the preface to New York edition. This preface gives us a look into James' method of composition. Okay, While on his visit to Venice, the romantic beauty and serenity of the place has affected James' mind in such a way that uh, the embryo or the germ of young American girl in this surrounding begin to grow in his mind. So... Uh, during his studies, the inception, the idea of Isabella's character, Isabel's character take place in his mind. And she is a, and he describes in his preface a certain young girl who affronts her destiny, who is, uh, who is uh, what we can say, who is playing with her own destiny in wrong way. Once the character of young girl was formed, the other characters begin to take shape. So the other characters, as Sir has uh, rightly uh, put this slide, other characters are Ralph uh, Tochet, Gilbert Osmond, Madame Murley, Lord Warburton, Casper Goodwood, Henrietta Stackpole, Countess Gemini, and Nez Ned Rosier. So Isabella is the central intelligence in the novel. The young woman, Isabella, she's the central intelligence in the novel. And she is shown in the scale of her relationship with herself and with the other, other uh, characters. So at one point of time, she feels that she is completely tangled in her relationship with other people. So Isabella finds herself in a kind of, in a kind of mess, in a kind of uh, labyrinth. Okay, so these are the characters that we will discuss in brief. So novel is presented in two ways. Hmm? Author's omniscient view, representing all the situations, characters, including Isabella, in the technique of point of view. Okay, so this technique is wonderfully uh, represented through the characterization of Ralph Tochet. So Ralph Tochet in the novel is the voice of author himself, Henry James himself. And, and that of central consciousness presenting by the atmosphere of the mind of the main character, Isabel. As we had earlier discussed, Isabel is uh, through her stream of consciousness, through the working of her mind, she analyzes the happenings in her life. She weighs her own, uh, her own belief system, her own convictions, what she has done with her life on receiving fortune from Ralph and her father. 
okay uh, her psychological reactions to different situations are realistically presented in the in the novel so a huge um, substance of the novel deals with the psychological working of the protagonist isabel and other characters like madam merly even gilbert osmond etc that we will see in further part uh, now let us take a brief glance into the characters isabel archer as we had discussed she is the heroine she is the main uh, character in the novel protagonist okay ralph tochet is isabel's cousin who is an american expatriate in england so ralph tochet uh, tochet's father mr tochet daniel tochet is a banker and they have a huge uh, what we can say property and they have uh, uh, many um, houses in different parts of england hmm. so uh, ralph is a tubercular uh, patient of tuberculosis he is slowly slowly dying he has affinity for young isabel but uh, ralph never uh, never um, what we can say openly uh, tells her anything about that so he maintains a kind of uh, um, very uh, good uh, relationship with isabel and uh, they have a platonic relationship till the end they have wonderful attachment and ralph uh, is the one who requests uh, his father to give half of the property to isabel so through ralph isabel inherits a huge property huge fortune from mr touch his her uncle gilbert osmond is isabel's husband he is a reclusive aesthet he is a um, sterile dilettant this is how he has been described that we will see in the presentation we will get deep into it madam merly is the instrument Uh, is instrumental in uh, getting isabel uh, close to gilbert osmond and actually we come to know that madam merly had got relationship with gilbert osmond lord warburton he is a very good english gentleman of uh, very high order he is rich he is humble and he is a true friend of isabella and ralph till the end casper goodwood is an american uh admirer of isabella who follows her uh, till the end of this novel henrietta stackpole she can be uh, called as counter ego of isabel whereas isabel is practically very naive practically very uh, innocent henrietta stackpole she is practically very smart and she makes good choice for her life countess gemini is gilbert osmond's uh, sister Ned Rosier is um, is a young uh, enthusiastic lover of Gilbert Osmond's daughter Pansy. So these are, and Pansy is Gilbert's daughter who is very attached to Isabel Archer. So these are some of the characters uh, in the story. Now let us move ahead and uh, see the summary of this novel in nutshell. yes uh, i will read out uh, and i'll browse a little faster okay the novel opens on a tea taking episode in english country house where an american son and father ralph and mr tochet one english gentleman lord warburton are sitting in garden belonging to a manor called garden court in england they discuss the great hope of the future and they believe it lies in the women of their time they declare that a change is coming at this point in the novel isabel archer appears on scene her aunt mrs tochet has brought her from america so that she can see the world isabel archer is young opinionated women woman with many ideas of her own but little concrete experience or practical wisdom henry james has portrayed the character of isabel by keeping the memory of her own dead cousin mini templar mini temple i'm sorry like mini temple isabel is shown to be an avid reader of fiction and carries lofty ideas and many factitious theories in her mind factitious are all those theories they are very impractical 
but they are very lofty she is unattached ambitious and wants to assert her own unique self in life she it is unclear though that what she can do in life that could help her realize her ambition so when ral gives her lots of fortune directly through her father he wants to see what this girl will do with the fortune that she has inherited what is the real ambition of her life what she wishes to fulfill does her ideals have any concrete uh, target this is what ralph wants to see the novel is representation of ambitions of a young girl and her dismal prospect for realizing her own ideals in a restricted conventional society the society where she comes is restricted is conventional because the society has european conservative attitude uh, ruling upper hand of european conservative attitude that we will discuss in the uh, as we progress in the critical part of this presentation in victorian society marriages marriage was often viewed as the only possibility for a woman to assert her success in society so the era that we are now dealing here is victorian era victorian era deals with morality high standards in behavior especially for women so marriage becomes a kind of um, a kind of end in her life she has to marry a suitable person she has to be true to her domestic ideals this is the uh, idea behind uh, what we can say victorian uh, civilization their culture they want women to be the angel of the house they want women to look after the domestic necessities and be an ideal representative of their culture in the opening part of the novel we read that lord warburton takes an extraordinary step by proposing marriage to isabel archer though he knows on her only for a short time he has a great reputation name title plenty of money and that would have make him a good husband in the eye of the eyes of the society so lord warburton was the suitable uh, person for isabel however Isabel takes the surprising step of turning him down even though she likes him very much as a person this makes her very interesting to her cousin Ralph Touchett who wants to see what a woman who turns down lord warburton will do with her life here ralph represents the omniscient view of the author himself on isabella's refusal of warburton's proposal he predicts that the girls like isabel end up choosing for themselves men of affectation affectation is false show and showy appearance who are actually lacking in innate goodness and generosity of spirit so here is a kind of prophecy made by a kind of guessing made by the author himself through the uh, through ralph tochet's own prediction that the uh, he judges isabella's nature and he had he gives opinion about isabella's shallowness in choosing uh, in uh, rejecting lord warburton and he says that girls like her will choose somebody who is apparently who looks very promising but without any innate generosity or innate goodness okay ralph and isabel goes with isabel's american friend henrietta stackpole to london for a short trip there casper goodwood isabel's suitor from america has arrived in order to follow isabel he would also like to marry isabel he also has a lot of money and has become well established because of his involvement in the cotton industry isabel tries to refuse him but he insists she tells him to give her two years of freedom before making any decision about her future so here isabel tries to uh, uh, tries to dissuade casper goodwood from following her but he is insistent and now she asks for two more years and the development takes place thus the good the group returns to garden court where ralph tochet's father daniel tochet has taken ill and is about to die there isabel meets madam merle 
she is another character, interesting character, an intriguing one, who is an instrumental in bringing Isabel and Osman together. A friend of Mrs. Totchett, Madame Murley, is a very graceful and talented socialite. Isabel is impressed with her. Meanwhile, Mrs. Uh, Ralph Totchett, who has consumption and expects to die young. What is consumption? He is a patient of tuberculosis, TB, and he expects to die young. It is expected that Ralph will not live longer. Hmm? And we will see the symbolic significance of making Ralph a short-lived gentleman in the novel in the coming slides. He tells his father that he doesn't need all the money his father would have uh, would leave him in his will. Instead, Ralph insists that his father give half of his money to Isabel. Ralph tells his father he would like to see what Isabel will do when she is granting, granted the material wealth that will allow her to enact her ideas. So Ralph was, although obliquely critical about Isabel's shallow view of life, he doesn't express it openly. He does one thing. He uh, asks his father, this requests his father to leave half of his fortune that is millions of uh, what we can say dollars to Isabel so that it, it will be seen that how Isabel uses those money for her for realizing her ideals. So here we uh, there is a criticism on Isabel's nature. Actually, she doesn't have any ideal of her own. She has only fanciful nation about notion about her freedom. With this money, she wants to help another individual to realize his aim. And this individual is Gilbert Osman, who is extremely thankful and highly exploitative in nature. So Isabel's idealism is badly exploited by her husband, Gilbert Osman, that we will see in the next part of the uh, story. Upon, upon Mr. T uh, Torchett's death, Mrs. Torchett, Isabel, and Madame Murley go to Florence. Mrs. Trochet has her own house in Florence. Madame Murley introduces Isabel to her friend Gilbert Osman, an American aesthet who resides in Florence. So we had already described, uh, described what is an aesthet. He is a man who is a painter, who is the collector of all the uh, artistic things uh, like babylots, like uh, paintings, like, um, uh, like all those uh, relics and uh, beautiful monuments. So all these things he used to collect, a kind of museum, a kind of, a kind of, uh, a kind of museum he has in his house. He is distinguished by his impeccable taste in art and other commodities. Gilbert Osmond ha also has a daughter named Pansy. Madame Murley has a plan to get Isabel to marry Gilbert Osmond. Isabel is surprisingly timid in Osmond's presence and is afraid of saying any wrong thing. So from here itself, Isabel takes that submissive form. So even during the initial stage of their meeting, when they were meeting they, during their courtship, when Osman was courting Isabel, she was very submissive. She was very timid. She was taken awe of Osman's knowledge, his aesthetic sense. She was so awestruck that she could hardly speak in front of him. Isabel's travel around Europe for half a year and goes to Greece and the Asian manner for another half with Madame Murley. She ends her journey in Rome, where Gilbert Osman comes to visit her. They become engaged in Rome. Isabel then informs her social acquaintances, beginning with Casper Goodwood, of her intention to marry Gilbert Osman. None of them approve. Isabel feels that her act of marrying Gilbert Osman isolates her from her friends. Several years later, Isabel finds herself in a loveless marriage. She gives all the appearance to others of being happy, hosting Thursday evening parties, social gatherings, and representing Gilbert Osman to the world. But she feels that her husband detests her. 
he has been unable to change her osmond wants her to change okay but he couldn't isabel was self same free willed and spirited girl to mold her into her his image however they do not ever ever articulate their dislike to each other there was a cold disdain between the couple but neither of them articulated their dislike for each other they live civilly but fully isabel realized that osmond is really very shallow and cares too much about what other people think so it is a victorian attitude he is extremely snobbish by nature so he is not the self same osmond whom he loved okay osmond who has shown that he doesn't care from anything except art but he is highly socialite he cares for people he wants isabel's money in order to enjoy and show his uh, show his affluence to the world he likes to show his superiority to the world by pretending to reject its value in favor of his own ideas but this is just a show because he deeply cares about his own image when gilbert osmond's daughter pansy comes of, a, of age to be wed then impetuous young man named brendan rosier he pursues he asks for assistance from madam merley and isabel but gilbert believes that mr rosier is neither rich nor very influential and not respected enough to be married to pansy gilbert and madam merley would like isabel to use her influence on lord warburton they want isabel to persuade warburton to marry pansy and isabel ultimately doesn't want to bring this about making and this makes osman believe that she secretly secretly defies him and he is highly egoistic as we had discussed he doesn't take it well meanwhile ralph has taken a turn for the worse that means his health deteriorates ralph is a tuberculosis patient of tuberculosis he visits room for for a while and osmond is displeased that isabella spends a lot of time with him during his visit to rome isabella visits the hotel where ralph is staying and she spends a lot of time with him ralph then returns to his home in garden court england where he plans to make his final resting place isabella's friends come to ralph to observe whether or not she is really happy in this marriage of which they all disapprove so all her friends they want to see whether isabel is happy or not they knew that isabel is not happy but she used to pre pretend that she is very happy she used to put a false appearance of her happiness of her conjugal of her conjugal bliss isabel begins to respect uh, suspect from madam merley's over zealous interest in pansy's marriage that Mar madam merley has meddled in her affairs she then learns from osmond's sister that madam merley is in fact pansy's mother and that osmond and madam merley once had an extramarital affair isabel is shocked and horrified to realize that madam merley has actually manipulated her into marrying osmond and that osmond has married her only for her fortune isabel's discovery of this fact makes her question whether or not she really was capable of making a free choice all on her own so till now she was under a kind of assumption that she has chosen osmond it is her own choice it is her own free will now she realizes that she is an instrumental uh, in a kind of intrigue she is being manipulated by madam merley and osmond she realizes that her own life is too mixed up in the affairs of other in order to be free she must acknowledge the way her life is entangled in the social relationship with other people now she realizes that she is caught in, caught in the labyrinth of relationship and now she needs to understand her relationship with each and every of this individuals she openly defies her husband when she returns to garden court to say goodbye to ralph on his death bed osmond has meanwhile sent his daughter pansy to a convent so that so as to make her forget her love for led rosier
Isabel promises Pansy that she will return. Isabel learns from Madame Merle that Ralph was the one who made her rich woman. Upon his deathbed, Ralph confesses to having ruined Isabel by giving her so much of money. So Isabel is shown uh, like a, as a woman who is incapable of managing her fortune. It is somebody else who exploits her, uh, her money, her fortune, her property, making her a target of fortune hunters. Isabel and Ralph do share an intimate movement and stress the importance of one another in each other's life. Novel concludes with Casper Goodwood's arrival at the garden. Yes, I'm sorry for the connection error, uh, for the disturbance. Yeah, please continue. Now we will please continue. You are audible. Yeah. Uh, the central theme. Sir, uh, can you please uh, switch? Huh, let's put the next slide. Yes. Uh, the central theme or the central idea in the novel is old world versus new world. So what is the old world's world? Here we had already discussed the difference between the old world and the new world. Old world uh, refers to the European value and culture. And the new world is American value and culture. Literature and art are often considered to be place where culture can showcase its sophistication, tradition, and value to, the, to its highest form. So by the time a portrait of lady was written, the several American authors they have, uh, they have those who have come all the way from America to England and they have established themselves here. So they have gained respect in the old world, such as Harman Menville, Nathalian Hawthorne, Edgar Allan Poe and Walt Whitman, etc. So they were all renowned writers, those who have established themselves in England. The literary Tradition associated with the old world at the time was, after all, in a state of decadence. So it is a mutual process. The American culture, it was gaining something from the ancient culture of Europe. At the same time, European decadent culture, it was also getting refreshed in contact with the new world culture, that is American culture. The character of Lord Warburton represents this. He has many political ideas about evolution and change, but he benefits them from the very institution against which he rebels. Hmm. Madame Murley and Gilbert Osmond, 
though both were americans they are the example of old world values osman is an example of old world values and madam merli also hmm, they they lived in they have left america for long and they had come to europe and they have fully adapted the european style of life when isabel archer arrives in the first scene at the garden court the men are discussing the possibility of bring women bringing new ideas with them isabel represents american modernity and culture in the novel when she walks in she is the materialization of the hope that a fresh perspective a perspective on things could help revive old european tradition that are decadent and rigidly formal so isabel is brings the new hope from the new world however in the book she falls under the power of american who are committed to the old world values so she comes under the spell of the people like madam merli and gilbert osmond who who they are the custodian of old world values she falls for the illusion there is a real system of value behind this aestheticism so she is victim of illusion that madam merli and uh, osmond both of them they have created so she cannot realize her own new ideas so this is the idea behind the conflict between the old world and the new world in the novel next point is dilettantism what is dilettantism it is a false aestheticism so here there is a criticism made by james uh, henry james in this novel on the attitude of fall uh, in the uh, about the false aesthetic sense gilbert osmond is the is the villain in the novel and he is the dilettant he is the representative of this idea his character uh, he is characterized by fine taste and fine vision but practically speaking he is capable of taking action he is incapable of taking any action in his life although he is very capable curator of his house he is not even good at making his art himself so he is although people consider him an, an artist but his painting is not liked by people for example madam merli who also is known to have very fine taste dislike osmond's drawings thus he is the character of a person who lives aesthetically by collecting objects by doing nothing in life but looking and judging things he is a disdainful judge of the things around him he does not create anything isabel however originally believes that there is a system of value behind the way in which gilbert osmond judges things she only later learns that he is only superficial he creates the illusion that there is some inscrutable secret behind his judgment and that only he has access to it because she believes that there is some sort of value behind his appearance she believes that she is doing something in enabling him to continue living as an aesthet by giving him money so the money that isabel receives from tochet family she gives it to uh, osman she believes that with that money he will re realize his ideals so isabel herself doesn't hand have any concrete idea to realize in her life and she only extends help to her husband she wants that it is through his progress that she will uh, write a story of her own success on receiving the fortune she believes that by marrying gilbert osman she is helping another person to express himself this ultimately ends up being her idea helping another person to express uh, the truth comes out that he has that osman himself doesn't have any idea he just likes appearing as if he he does have higher ideas by mystifying other people henry james here critic this kind of inactive life of aesthetic judgment without moral grounding and uh he uh, here osman is a kind of person who is inactive himself but he has disdainful opinion about the people around him he looks down people and he dries up their soul with his judgmental nature 
freedom and independence these two ideas are embodiment in the uh, are embodied in the character of isabel isabel enjoys her independence and one of her first characterization uh, in the novel when mrs tochet she sends a telegram describing isabel as quite independent the telegram uh, surely confuses ralph and mr tochet because they are unable to make make out what this term independent means whether she is financially independent spiritually independent unmarried anything so this uh, representation of telegram being very um, very not clear very obscure hmm, has symbolic representation with the isabella being very unclear very obscure about her sense of independence so there is a symbolic connection as the telegram sent by mrs tochetti is very obscure it doesn't give the clear idea of the word independent similarly isabella all uh, isabel although she poses to be independent she doesn't have the clear idea of how to exercise her free will free spirit and independence she has no means to do exercise her independence and she in order to exhibit that i am a free spirit she rejects the good suitors and desires of other people like casper goodwood and lord warburton so she expresses her freedom by turning down casper goodwood and lord warburton's marriage proposal in at the beginning of the novel in case of isabel freedom is expressible only negatively ralph believes he is simply providing her with the means to better express her freedom of thoughts when he gives her half of his inheritance so ralph who has soft corner of for isabel he feels that by giving her some fortune he will be helping isabel to uh, materialize her ideas but she do not uh, she doesn't have any concrete idea or practical idea of her own however this means of express say expression money ends up determining the events of the novel huh? that means she uh, uh, her the co in the course of novel her ideals they show that they do not have any proper base so her life is taking deteriorating form hmm. so this becomes the central idea of the uh, entire novel another is theme of renunciation and stoicism renunciation means giving away the things that you want to uh, just uh, what we call as uh, for give, giving the things or renouncing the things or uh, not having the uh, attachment leaving all the attachment that is renunciation renunciation is one of the prominent uh, themes in most of the henry james james novels even in the novels of his mature mature stage this idea of renunciation is prominent James creative consciousness carries the idea of futility of human life due to the early death of his cousin albany based cousin mini temple so he feels that life is futile this symbolizes the unfulfilled potential of youth the majority of james novels protagonist work out his or her destiny through a process of withdrawal from the activities of life so they do not they are not much involved in the activities of the life they leave leave a kind of withdrawn existence though they are thinking they are brooding over they are judging the repercussions of their actions and their thoughts and they are not actively doing anything so in the portrait of a lady ralph tochet isabel's tubercular cousin consciously renounces life and its possibility even when he was not in that bad health he renounces life he gives half of his inheritance to his sister cousin isabel so this shows that he is so detached to the life we notice that it is ralph who bestows great inheritance on isabel by persuading her dying father daniel uh, touch it ralph is solely responsible for the legacy that she receives and the consequent fate of isabel he is the provider of the fortune which ironically ensures that isabel will have the infinite woes in her life 
Now, Isabel Archer also exhibits the ideals of renunciation, forgoing things, and stoicism. She is also unattached with the things. She also never enjoys the money that she receives receives for herself. She wants to give those money, use those money for the realization of ideals and dreams of her husband, Gilbert Osment. In the end of the novel, she rejects the prospect of a new life also that Casper Goodwood offers her. In the end of the novel, when Casper Goodwood comes and he offers, proposes her once again and asks her to return back with him to America, she doesn't accept it. She returns back to Rome. Although her married life uh, lack any promise of happiness with a person like Osmond, she wants to maintain the facade of conjugal bliss, even at the expense of her own suffering. So she, she clinges to the ideal, Victorian ideal of domesticity, of settlement. Gilbert Osmond also exhibits the appearance of romanticization. He pretends not to, not to care much about the popularity, about the material wealth, but actually he is hankering after wealth and approbation. He is greedy for money as well as popularity. So Osman's idea of renunciation or his projection of renunciation is negative in nature. Madame Murley renounces her own claim on her love for Osman. And she never, in, in the entire course of novel, she never herself admits that Pansy is her daughter. It is also great, uh, what we can say, exhibition or projection of stoicism on part of Madame Murley. Ned Rosier, who is an um, admirer of Pansy, Osman's daughter, he sells off all his valuable uh, valuable babylons goodies and in order to uh, amass the fortune so as to impress osman okay so he also renounces his love for his babylons okay and lord waberton and casper goodwood learns patience in renunciation of one's claim hmm, for fulfillment they believe that they show that the fulfillment in or getting everything in the love is not only the fulfillment of your fulfillment of your desire is not the end of your love life life you can um, also renounce this material thing and maintain a kind of platonic relationship this is what has been um, exhibited by these two characters Bibliographical, uh, sorry, biographical angle. This we had already discussed that James Henry James was much impressed and he was much influenced by the memory of his own cousin, uh, Albany born cousin Mary Temple. And this portrait of a lady is a replica of the memory that he has cherished of his cousin. In his celebrated preface to the New York edition of The Portrait of a Lady, Henry James has described the process of artistic creation of Isabel Archer. The image of Isabel came to his mind during his stay in Venice in uh, 1876 and 77. And soon he started giving shape to the character of Isabel and other characters whom he himself calls as the satellite images. George Eliot's Middle March has created an impact on, on James's psyche. And Dorothea Brooke and Gwedonlin Harlet, Harlet, these were the two characters who were the kind of ideal whom he wanted to imbibe in the characterization of Isabel Archer. So it is George. Meredith, uh, sorry, George Eliot's Middle March and the character of Dorothea Brooke, who is the main inspiration be behind the characterization of Isabel in this work. At the same time, we have discussed that it is his uh, Albany based uh, tubercular cousin, Mary uh, Temple, uh, who was the driving force inspiration behind the creation of Isabel. Her artistic replica in the form of Isabel is beautifully done in the novel. Now let us see the 
main uh, what we can say evolution of isabel archer into portrait of a lady how uh, he, she has been beautifully created as a portrait of a lady from a flamboyant happy go lucky and free will girl into a consummate lady okay who takes her life very seriously and who becomes highly introspective in the nature in course of novel isabel archer is a young flamboyant and free willed individual who evolves into portrait of a consummate lady so she matures with the progress of the novel and with the realization of her duties as a mother and a wife isabel is a fine reflector and the central consciousness in the novel who tries to understand her situation through reflections and introspections so main uh, chapter where we find that isabel understand her position understands her position as a woman as a mother as a wife and her relationship with other people in chapter number 42 that we will discuss she comprehends her situation through contemplation and self knowledge so this contemplation and self knowledge is beautifully brought out in the novel through the use of technique called stream of consciousness isabella becomes a victim of her own factitious theories what is her factitious theory she doesn't have any ideal to realize in her life she wants to extend her fortune to her husband so that he can realize his aesthetic ideals in her life she feels that her magnanimity her large heartedness will be praised will be valued this is her factitious theory and which falls flat in her life she doesn't receive any respect from osman she doesn't receive any praise for from osman who cre cre uh, who keeps a kind of indifference with herself throughout his life throughout this story isabel becomes a victim of own factitious theory and is punished for her impracticality and gullible nature she is gullible because she has been uh, intrigued into a kind of scheme by madam merly and uh, osment her marriage with a cold and indifferent uh, dilettante transforms isabel into a subdued and careful individual so with bad experiences of life isabel is subdued despite innate ideological difference with osment who is a disdainful is exploiter of isabel's false fortune she maintains a happy appearance of her married life so isabel is tries to maintain a kind of uh, appearance a veneer of a card of happy married life a conjugal life of her own she puts forth stiff upper lip attitude of a lady from conservative aristocratic british society so she was earlier free willed american girl and after marriage she tries to uh, be at uh, uh, identify herself with other victorian women who creates who maintains a kind of uh, image or appearance of respectability of uh, of happiness in their life even though there is some disturbance in the Uh, in their married life in their conjugal life isabel is a woman with a pure mind she represents innocence of america the new land many critics have pointed out the portrayal of isabel uh, is made as sexually frigid individual who is afraid of advances of her genuine lovers so may, there are many interpretations some they call that she is sexually frigid what is sexually frigid she is not capable of having any amorous any love relationship with anyone and she is very cold in that sense she reacts surprisingly to good good's kiss and in the uh, in the last scene in the last chapter which james describes as white lightning so there is a scene that when she comes out of that garden court house and uh, Cas uh, this casper uh, goodwood follows her he proposes her he kisses her but she is taken aback she reacts surprisingly and she runs back to the house she takes she opens the latch of the house so that symbolic representation that a girl, that a lady running away from her lover she is 
so strong to have the resilience to break away that strong passionate embrace of Casper Goodwood and returning back to her house shows that she takes resorts to her she chooses domesticity and settlement for herself and she is not she is now completely evolved into a very domestic uh, into a very uh, what we can say mature and uh, settled and uh, respectable individual as has been expected by her surrounding society civilized society now the next uh, slide uh, is will discuss gilbert osmond and his own dilettantism uh, what is dilettantism uh, dilettantism is a kind of uh, false uh, pretension that a person is having a high uh, artistic sense so osmond here is an expatriate from america and he stays in italy for the entire life so there is a strong for him to be considered as an european person he dabbles his paintings and collects all these specimens of arts and coins etc so there are monuments there are paintings there are uh, what we uh, what we call them all those uh, goodies uh, that he collects okay he adds isabel to his collection surprising thing is that isabel is also for her, him is a work of art so he collects isabel in his collection he considers life as an art okay and he wants a perfect harmony in his life he marries isabel for the sake of perfect arrangement between himself and madam mary so there so, so isabel is completes his own collection of arts and artifacts so osmond's indifference to material world is only a pose in the beginning isabel is much impressed by his artistic sense and she feels that he is a man of more artistic genius and lesser worldly uh, what we can say pursuit and she wishes to extend some financial help by marrying him so there is an high ideal that she keeps for herself when she marries osmond but actually he cares for the admiration of the world and material comfort isabel observes it is the line i quote from chapter number 42 that under all his culture his cleverness his amenity under his good nature his egoism lay hidden like a serpent in a bank of flowers so he is a highly he is a highly egoistic individual and uh isabel wants he wants isabel to sub completely submit herself to his will this doesn't happen isabel is through and through a free willed girl she, she defies osmond at many places she is constantly in touch with ralph she uh warburton to marry pansy so she defies uh, osmond at many many places and this really displeases osmond in the novel there is a symbolic overturn at many places where osmond is identified with saturn especially in chapter number 42 we have very less time uh, otherwise uh, chapter number 42 is an elaborate description about the relationship between isabel and osmond about the stream of consciousness technique about the um, character of uh, isabel uh, about the character of osmond in detail he pretends to be a man of cultivated taste and refined manner however he uses irony to degrade people he is always ironical he constantly hates isabel for her willful nature and his hypocrisy and villainy is even drives up the soul of his beloved madam mel she also detests him for his egoistic nature he is least bothered about his daughter's happiness whom he sends back to a secluded life in a convent okay so this is how osmond's nature the true character of osmond has been described in the novel now let us uh, have a brief uh, understanding about the nature of relationship between isabel and osmond osmond's indirect suggestion to use her influence over lord warburton and persuade him 
to marry Pansy makes Isabel sit back and think and weigh the real status of her relationship with Osment. At the same time, there is a vague suggestion of Osment's intimacy with Madame Murley, which troubles Is Isabel deeply. The indifference and cold disdain, that is hatred, in Osman's behavior greatly disturbs her throughout the, her marriage, married life. For her, his presence was a blight and his favor a misfortune. So he doesn't, he, she is uh, nauseated, she is disenchanted with his behavior, with his uh, uh, pretentious nature. And she knew of no wrong he had done. Basically, Osman has do not done any wrong. He was not violent. He was not cruel. He was not, uh, he never used any bad words for Isabel. But she believed that there is a kind of muted disagreement in Osman, in the mind of Osman for Isabel. She believed that he hated her. He had discovered that she, is, she was different. She was not like other submissive and subdued ladies. She had her own independent and free will. And this only, uh, this was only an ex unacceptable thing for Osman. She was after all herself, she couldn't help that. There was a mutual disenchantment in the couple. The couple were mutually disenchanted. The, there was an estranged, uh, what we can say, relationship between these two. What is estrangement? So there was a polarization. Both of them, they knew each other well. They do not have any point of agreement and they live in the same house as the strangers. That is estrangement. So they, the couple, they live like strangers in the same house. Isabella thought that she saw the full moon now. Now she saw the whole man. Okay, so after living for so many years with Osman, after losing her child, after having so many experiences where Osman has tried to play some scheme, has tried to dupe Is Isabel, that she realizes his true nature. Now let us move ahead and discuss Henry James' art in a brief. Uh, I request her to move the next slide. Yes, Henry James in his uh, in his essay, The Art of Life, James has compared the novelist's art to a paint brush, brushes art. James uses pictorial technique in order to uh, fill in the details in his novels. So he, his technique is pictorial. Okay, the opening lines of the uh, of the novel where he describes English countryside, where the uh, where Ralph, Mister uh, Touchett, and La Lord Wal Walburton they were all taking tea. So it is a beautiful graphic beauty of that description. It is like painters uh, uh, working, bringing out, giving the concreteness to the novel. So uh, wonderfully he has described the English countryside at numerous places when uh, when Isabel was visiting Rome, she was going to Florence, she was going to other places. He has wonderfully described those places by using his pictorial method. At the same time, there is a dramatic method also. When he wanted to show the clash between the characters, he wanted to show, he showed it by using the dialogues between the people, use of the verbal interplay is wonderfully done huh, in his in this novel. So, uh, and uh, we find that there is a description of Osman's villa, which personifies Osman himself. Like that villa was situated in Florence, and its name was Palazzo Rocanera, and it is extension of his own personality. The house has a sparse garden and it, it wears, it wore a lowering sullen look as if defying the world to look in. So this description gives the Osman's own nature. So 
there is a beautiful uh, creation of background. The background is created in this way that it penetrates in and out into the persona of the characters. Okay. Another important thing that I would love to discuss here is the use of stream of consciousness technique. There were other, uh, uh, other what we can say, users of uh, stream of consciousness technique during this period, like Virginia Woolf in her novel To the Lighthouse, and James Joyce also he has used, Joseph Conrad and D.H. Lawrence also in his works, they have wonderfully exploited this theme of stream of consciousness technique. James has also used this technique in this novel, in the present novel, in order to see the life through the mediating imagination or superior glance. Okay, so it is through imagination or it is through brooding or contemplation of the character, the entire working or the progress of novel is seen. In the novel, we find the use of internal monologue of the characters. Characters like Isabel, character like Madame Marley, they are seen having their internal monologue, working of their mind. Here, the author, he tries to bring out the fine nuances of the thoughts of his, passing thought of his characters, central characters at a particular time. So, through their passing thoughts, through their, through their reminiscences, through the working of their mind, the progress of the novel is described. This is the technique that has been used by uh, Henry James in his, uh, in his work, um, The Portrait of a Lady. James himself has lived life, uh, believed that life is uh, full of chaos and uh, it is a waste. And he is uh, having a very strong aesthetic sense. He feels that art is a thing that renders order to the life, that gives, idealizes, and beautifies the life. It arranges and gives a proper uh, sequence to the happenings of the life. It brings back serenity and beauty to the uh, apparently formlessness of life. So this ideal has been very beautifully projected in the uh, through the characterization of Osmond. Osmond here represents this ideology of Henry James. As the author himself feels that art gives completeness to the disorderly form of the life. Life is in itself very chaotic, very disorderly, very haphazard. And in order to give a beautiful shape to the life, art is... Uh, nurturing and cultivating the artistic uh, attitude or art is extremely required in the similar way osman also feels that life can be arranged only through mediating force of art so osman becomes the alter ego representing representing this ideal of author in the novel that art is a kind of complementary to life art completes the life and gives it a beautiful shape. Again, one of the most important thing I, that I wish to discuss here is the difference between the American egalitarianism and European uh, conservatism that James has dealt with in this work. Now, this we had earlier also seen and we will now discuss it in, uh, in brief here. As we discussed, James' I, novels deal with American myth of Adamite innocence. So this is a kind of concept that I wish to uh, explain you here. That R. W. B. Lewis, in his book, American Adam, he has shed some light on the bibli bi biblical allegory of Adam in the Garden of Paradise. Okay. Now the new Adam in America. So all these new young people, they were in America, they were inhabiting a brave new world. In the mid of 19th century, some intellectuals, they came down to uh, Europe, whereas the others, those who stayed in America, they have a kind of xenophobia about the European culture, European influence. American viewed Europe as corrupt and they wish to withdraw themselves from the 
tent of European civilization, especially the countries like England, France, and Spain. They were suspiciously looked at by the people of then America. It is Jefferson and Adams' theory of manifest destiny that was based on tendency of Americans to shy away from European culture. So it is a theory, theory of manifest destiny, where Jefferson and Adams, they have given a tendency, they have described a tendency among the then American people to shy away from European culture. He strongly believed. Now, uh, in later period, some of the American intellects like Henry James Sr., and Henry James uh, Jr., Henry Adam, all these people, they believe that um, uh, this self-denial of America is not going to take it anywhere. Hmm? He strongly believed in richness, culture, and philosophy of European civilization. They feel that we cannot keep ourselves aloof from the influences of European culture, civilization, their ancient wisdom. So they want to get benefited from European wisdom. Henry Jem uses this ideal in his work, The Portrait of a Lady, in which Isabel Archer embodies the American qualities like primeness, presumptuousness, innocence, and earnestness. So she has all those quintessential American qualities. She comes to Europe in order to widen the gamut of her experiences and to get herself enriched culturally and she she herself evolves into a complete consummate lady with lots of wisdom who has strong belief in ethos in the value system in the domesticity she finds herself adrift in the vast multicultural flux of flux of european civilization during the development of the novel, we find that Isabel is going to different uh, places in Europe and she is completely uh, surprised and she is much impressed by European civilization and she is yet she is confused uh, and she is not capable of imbibing anything for her own. But hmm, by the end of the life, uh, novel, she develops as a human being. She understands the right and the wrong. And for herself, she chooses the civil ideals of domesticity and settlement. She is not carried away by the fanciful uh, notion of passionate love for a lover like Casper Goodwood, but she chooses domesticity. She decides to settle in her marriage, married life, however unpleasant the experiences might be. She wants to keep promise that she had given to her daughter Pansy. And she wants to create an ideal of a woman herself huh? in front of this society. She wanted to maintain that appearance of respectability and happiness. And this is only the integral ethos of European culture that Isabel Archer imbibes through her uh, character, through her behavior. So this is how we had seen uh, Isabel Archer's development in the portrait of a lady. And uh, I had been asked to talk a little bit about the Bloomsbury group because it is in the background study. I'll take only two minutes of yours and discuss the Bloomsbury group and their activities in a brief. Okay. And uh, you may uh, find out the details later on. Bloomsbury group was given to a coterie of English writers, philosophers, artists who frequently met between 1907 to 1930 at the house of Clive and Vanessa Bell. Vanessa's brother and sister, Andrea and Virginia Stephen, who became later became Virginia Woolf. So they meet, met there in the Bloomsbury district of London. It is an area near the British Museum. They discussed the art, aesthetic and philosophical questions in spirit of agnosticism. What is agnosticism? It discusses the uh, view about the existence of God or not. Okay, uh, whether God exists or not, this they discuss during their discussion. They talk on different issues like aesthetics, philosophy, etc. 
were strongly influenced by G. M. Moore's Principia Ethica and Principia Mathematica by Russell, in the light of which they search for definition of good, the true, and the beautiful, and question the accepted ideas with a comprehensive irreverence irrever for all kind of shit. So they do not want to have any pretension. but they discuss all these issues or uh, like uh, beauty like truth like like uh, aesthetic beauty etc nearly all members of the group had been at the trinity and uh, kings college london and cambridge with lesley stephenson's son sorry who had introduced them to their sister vanessa and virginia most of them have been the apostle member of this society a select semi secret university club for the discussion of serious questions founded at the cambridge in the late 1820 j f d morris and john sterling tennison arthur miller uh, sorry arthur hallam edward fisgerel lesley stephen all they were being apostles they were all being members of this group in the early 90s when those who later formed the core of the bloomsbury group were elected to this society the literary cr critic low dickinson philosopher henry sidwick tagard whitehead moore and other critic became one of the bloomsbury groups also so they these groups they discuss art philosophy painting drawing etc and one of some of the members of this group they have evolved and exploited new techniques of writing uh, literature and uh, virginia wolf with her stream of consciousness technique she became famous and the same technique has been used by uh, henry james in this novel this is i feel that i tried to do justice to the topic that i had been given and uh, sir uh, with these words i wish to once again thank the organizers for giving this opportunity to share um, uh, my observations and my understanding of this novel thank you very much kapil sir yeah So thank you, Renuka, madam, for the wonderful presentation. Introducing Henry James right at the beginning of the presentation. Then she summarized the novel, uh, told us about the major characters. As we are dealing with the paper that deals with novels, and uh, in novel, that is what is the most important thing is to understand the major characters and their relationships. that is what that is how the plot progresses in most of the novels so that is what she has done then uh, she gave us the central idea to the theme gave us the central idea to uh, of the theme uh, relationship between osmond and isabel that is what was there and the different aspects of the uh, uh, novel were analyzed like pictorial method applied by the writer stream of consciousness technique arts and life that is one of the uh factor that has uh, important for critical and for critical analysis and uh, the clash between uh, the tradition and uh, 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 modernism that is represent, represented by the british society and the uh, american society uh, so uh, along with that we were introduced to a few uh, background topics particularly blooms uh, that group from that district uh, uh, bloomsbury group bloomsbury. the uh, uh i thank uh, renuka ma'am for this presentation on behalf of the organizers and the students and uh, uh, announce that the session is over and we will be meeting in the evening session at 4:30 uh, that will be followed by the uh, valedictory tree uh, for which uh, dr pillai is the chief guest so thank you thank you renuka ma'am Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Renuka. Thank you, thank you, Kapil. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank See you for the uh, yeah, PowerPoint you, presentation. Panikar, yeah. sir, thank you for the PowerPoint presentation, sir. Ah, okay. Hey, no, it's absolutely fine. Without absolutely. your assistance, no it would have not been possible. My pleasure. My pleasure.